You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is Healing at Soul Level with your host, Shauna Williams. Shauna is here to provide various forms of healing that are non-invasive, that promote relaxation and aid the body in naturally healing itself by using ancient healing techniques that have been around for centuries. So please welcome the host of Healing at Soul Level, Shauna Williams. Welcome to Healing at Soul Level. I'm your host, Shauna Williams. And we're broadcasting live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Valley Reed is CEO, owner, and owner of Chrysalis Healing Arts in Dallas, Texas. She is a trusted and experienced guide to delve into the weird and wild territory of dreams as a certified teacher of active dreaming, which is a combination of modern dream work and ancient shamanic dream practices. She teaches monthly dream groups, online classes, depth workshops, and weekend women's retreats on active dreaming in Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and New Mexico. She is a member of the International Association for the Study of Dreams and frequent presenter of annual and online conferences. Thank you for joining me today, Valley. It's great to wake up and have a conversation about dreams. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. (laughs) Because I have weird dreams like all the time. I just, I'm not sure what to do with them. I just write them down and keep going. (laughs) Oh, that's wonderful. It's so important to keep a dream journal. I always encourage people to start trying at least to write down something from their nighttime adventures. Okay. So how did you get into, you know, active dreaming? Well, when I was in my mid-20s, I had an experience of uh, a psychic dream that saved my life. Um, And so it was uh, what I would call a dream awakening that made me aware of possibilities available in dreams that I did not know before. And so I became... um, on a quest, really, in myself to learn as much as I could about what exactly is possible to be conscious of and learn how to do in the dream realms. And um, that is what took me into uh, connecting with the International Association for the Study of Dreams, which I've been a member of for almost two decades. And There I found an international family of dreamers um, from all persuasions. Basically, anyone who's interested in dreams and interacts with it in any way, um, whether as a professional or a lay person, um, which I came into um, as a lay person myself. Mm -hmm. And it was there that I met uh, my mentor, Jean Campbell, um, who is one of the uh, chairs for the I the International Association for the Study of Dreams, and then also I also met Robert Moss while I was there at that conference in 2000 in Washington D.C., and he was the first one to propose to me that I consider becoming a dream teacher. And I was like, what's that? I've never heard of such a thing. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Why would anyone do that for a living? And um, (laughs) um, I I am very passionate about dreams, uh, of, of course, because 
it's personal to me uh, having that experience of a dream that saved my life. It it um, became a real central focus for me, and I began to understand that people there really is a lot to learn about dreams, and a lot of it is really really important for us to understand that we do have these abilities that can help us to dream the future and inform our lives better so that we can navigate our waking world. And so I teach people how to dream consciously and the kinds of things that you can do inside of your dreams. As well as I also was cultivating a practice of dream sharing within my own family, with my own children. (sighs) And that's something that I did a very long time. And one of the reasons why I felt called to do that is because um, I felt like the one of the best things I could do as a mother for my children is to give them their dreams. Uh, and so that became a central part of our lives uh, as a family in terms of being able to communicate in a very deep and trusting way with one another and really honoring the uh, imaginative abilities that we have um, and cultivating that in in an intentional way. Um, So that cultivates bringing more imagination and creativity into the world Um, and and a level of communication that really is rooted in the soul level and deeply trustful. Um, Mm. So that's a really beautiful thing to cultivate in a family situation. So I began teaching that to families about family dream sharing. (laughs) So you mean like after the dream, you you get up and you discuss it with each other? Is that what you mean? Yes, that's certainly part of it. Um, uh, Over breakfast every morning uh, with my children before going to school, we would talk about what, what did you dream? And, um, you know, from that, uh, a lot of information, a lot of wonderful experiences come through. But then there's also, you know, during the bedtime ritual of putting your children to bed, kind of creating this space that cultivates a safe place for them uh, and encourages them to have dreams and inviting dreams in and the kinds of dreams that they want to have. And another important thing as a parent is that, you know, um, learning how to deal with things like scary dreams that your child may be having and yeah. how to help them with that is a really, really important part of family dream sharing. And a really important tool for that with not only with children, but anyone really is uh, dream reentry as a practice that's part of active dreaming that we uh, one of the core practices actually that we teach and that is where you're able to send your intention back inside of a dream that you've had um, and know what your action plan is going to be once you get inside the dream Uh, so this can be very helpful when you're dealing with a scary dream and you may feel afraid to go back and confront something that you were experiencing in your dream. And Mm. I'll give you an example. When my daughter was four years old, she was having a repetitive dream of uh, zombies were chasing her. And she was terrified. You know, she was four years old when this happened. Mm -hmm. And so I suggested to her, well, why don't you turn around and ask those zombies, why are you chasing me next time you have the dream? And that's really all that it took for her to be able to do just that because children are natural dreamers and they're actually really adept at all kinds of abilities inside dreams. And we have a lot to learn from children and when it comes to dreams Mm -hmm. (laughs) and, um, She was able to do just that in her inside of her dream. She turned around and asked those zombies, why are you chasing me? And they said, we want you to turn us into butterflies. (laughs) And so she did. And they flew away. And it was a very empowering 
uh, experience for her because she was able to resolve it through her own wisdom that was held inside the dream. And so yeah. asking the dream itself, what is needed in this situation, maybe in some way, to resolve it? What do I need to do? What is the action that needs to happen to change this situation? And so um, active dreaming very much has to do with working with the intention in that way of really trusting this deeper, wiser self that we are able to connect with in dreams. And um, in the action part, in essence, gives us ways that we can bring that uh, wisdom into our waking life. So it's really quite magical, <laughs> just like the dream. <laughs> You know, I used to um, like to share my dreams and I stopped doing it because I started hearing, you know, dreams are more fun if you just experience them and and not share them. So I was like, okay, let me keep that to myself. But um, we're going to stop right here and take a quick break (laughs) and we'll be right back. Dr. Rob Moyer is the director of the Ocean River Institute, and he is passionate about saving the ocean by helping dolphins suffering from nitrogen pollution. Nitrogen is a dangerous pollutant, affecting our oceans, altering ocean ecosystems, and contributing to global warming. The Ocean River Institute provides opportunities to make a difference and encourages people to go the distance for savvy stewardship of a greater and bluer planet Earth. Partnered with organizations from Massachusetts to Florida, Alaska to the Caribbean, the Ocean River Institute's mission is to foster involvement in conservation and environmental monitoring by facilitating grassroots efforts at local and regional levels. Hello, I'm Rob Moyer of the Ocean River Institute. Please visit our website at oceanriver.org. Sign up for free e-alerts. You may call us at 617-661-6647. Our email address is info at Ocean River. Become informed and then act with us. Thank you. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Hello and welcome back to Healing at Soul Level. We're broadcasting live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and I'm your host, Shauna Williams. Today, we're talking with Valerie Reed about dreaming with the ancestors, and uh, the focus is on active dreaming. Um, so she was telling us what active dreaming is, and um, so my question is like, okay, so this is actually sleep. At first, I thought it was more of a meditative state, but it's actually sleep, but um Is it because some people have more of a, um, you know, like some people can remember their sleep better than others. Do you teach people how to kind of remember their their dreams? I do find myself having that conversation with people quite often because I find that in the modern, hectic world that we live in today, uh, this is a, a bit of an epidemic, actually, people are losing contact with their dreams and they they have a hard time remembering them because of this for a variety of reasons and um, this is a problem um, when we lose touch with our our dreams we are losing touch with a vital resource within ourselves that deeply knows us in a way that we will not find elsewhere in our waking world outside of us. It connects us with our inner world and our inner wisdom um, and our uh, soul gifts. 
and those are unique to us. So if we are not in contact with that, how are we going to be able to bring those into the world? Um, mm. And so dreams are a path in order for us to, to do that, and that connects us to so many um, abilities in terms of our ability to heal ourselves and heal our lives, um, our ability to be deeply rooted in who we are and what we came here to do, even what our soul purpose is. So it gets pretty deep if once you start delving inside of it. Um, and I have had uh, the experience of just having that conversation with people and presenting the opportunities to open up their dreams and ways to do that through the core practices of active dreaming, that it kind of opens up the dream gates for people and their dreams return, uh, their ability to remember them. And I like to say that, you know, when we pay attention to our dreams, our dreams pay attention to us. So it's like a long lost friend, you know, that we're yeah. always connected to. Um, so it's something we want to cultivate a relationship with inside of ourselves, right, by paying attention to it. And that includes things like incubating a purpose, for instance, of what you would like to dream about when you go to sleep at night. What is your intention that you set for yourself and your dreams? That is a really powerful way to connect you with um, your dreaming self and that deeper, wiser self. And your dreams, you know, your dreaming self is paying attention, you know. Oh, she's paying attention to me. So, you know, this is where we're going to go tonight. Uh, the dream maker will provide you with what it is that you seek inside of your dreams. And we instinctively know how to do this. You know, dream incubation is based on an ancient practice that goes all the way back to the Greco-Roman world of the ancient Greeks and Romans and the ancient dream temples of Asclepius, the great god of healing. And <clears throat> we instinctively know that this is something that is important in our lives. Like, for instance, if we have an important decision that we have to make, right? Mm -hmm. A really big decision. You'll hear people say things like, well, I'm going to sleep on it. You know, right. uh, they're not going to make a decision until they sleep overnight. And so that indicates that there's some information that we're going to be gaining by doing that. Right. So we instinctively know that this is a thing <laughs> and we instinctively know to do that. Um, and so that is really in connection with dream incubation um, is incubating that intention for what you would like your dreams to bring you. And then, of course, the other part is capturing that and recording it and working with the information that comes through for you. And that's where, you know, uh, sharing dreams with others uh, can be very helpful to help you mm -hmm. further open up what your dreams are trying to bring through for you. So what's the difference, though, between like lucid dreaming and active dreaming? So... Uh, lucid dreaming is uh, a kind of uh, aware, you know, being conscious in your dreams. Mm -hmm. and very popular, uh, which is great because more and more people are trying to be conscious in their dreams. That's great. Uh, active dreaming is also about becoming conscious in your dreams, but also in your waking life um, by taking action based on what your dreams bring through to you. So it's not just about being conscious in your dreams, but it's about how can I take action to be a bridge between my waking and dreaming world. And also there's the shamanic part of active dreaming, which we have yet to discuss. And my favorite it's part. An important part. <laughs> it's an important part uh, of active dreaming, and therein kind of lies the difference. Uh, because with shamanic dream practices, you are um, getting, delving into the world where the animal powers exist and the ancestors and having learning how to connect with your spiritual guides and uh, who your guides are and 
how to navigate the dream worlds and, and where you can go. So you're doing it kind of in collaboration with these, uh, these instinctual and very wise and spiritual energies that also support your life, that are also part of your experience, right? Mm-hmm. Those inner realms of wisdom and, and spiritual realities that we interact with. And so, um, so it's really an act of surrender, you know, to becoming conscious, you know, whereas in lucid dreaming, it's more about focusing on the dreaming body and, you know, the technique of like seeing your hand and becoming a conscious, becoming conscious because you can see the hand of your dreaming body or seeing your dreaming body slip out of your physical body. And then kind of like seeing the different things that you can do inside the dream world. Um, And so that becomes more about controlling what goes on in your dreams. And to me, the ego is doing that all day long. And so when we're asleep, we want to let that deeper, wiser self come out. Okay. Well, we're going to, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Valley. We're going to need to stop right here and take a quick break and we will be right back. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists, and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. Psychologist, master certified coach, and CEO of the executive and organizational development firm True North Leadership, Dr. Relly Nadler brings his expertise in emotional intelligence to keynotes, consulting, coaching, and training. He is the author of Leader's Playbook and Leading with Emotional Intelligence that lays out tips and tools for effective leadership. Dr. Nadler has designed multi day executive boot camps for high achievers in Fortune 500 companies and has coached CEOs, presidents and their staff and developed and delivered innovative leadership programs for such organizations as Anheuser-Busch, BMW, MCI, EDS, DreamWorks Animation, the U.S. Navy and Vanguard Health Systems. To learn more and get your free iPhone app highlighting his tools with videos, leadership keys, visit www.truenorthleadership.com today. Hello and welcome back to Healing at Soul Level. I'm your host, Shauna Williams, and we're broadcasting live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Today, my guest is Valley Reed, and we're talking about dreaming with the ancestors. Um, we left off, we were talking about the shamanic part of active dreaming. So, Valley, I'll, Valley, I'll let you take over from here. Well, yeah, um, the... The shamanic part of active dreaming involves um, bringing in the the active conscious meditation of a journey guided by the sound of the drum that's facilitated generally in a group setting. And so this provides a container to delve into uh, the, the world behind the world. Um, and explore other realities that exist in the dream realms in a conscious dream state. Um, And this is part of the practice that is very powerful because um, it's very accessible to everyone. That's one of the things that I love about dreams is the equality of it because we all dream. And so um, because of that, we have access to these incredibly deep uh, resources of of non-ordinary experience is one way of saying it. 
And that involves things like working with the animal powers and um, also rooting us into these other realms of experience in the tree of life where you find that you have access to places like uh, the lower realm, which is a place where you can often find uh, connections with the ancestors. And then the middle realm, which is a place of uh, the realms of experience that are close to the earth and even parallel lives. Um, and then in the upper realm, you find experiences that are connected with the spiritual energies of your spiritual guides and teachers. And so the animal powers are crucial in helping us to navigate these places in the dream realm. And they do that because they're connected with our instinctual nature. And they have this innate wisdom and specialized skills that are beyond our limited waking mind. And so providing the space of uh, sacred energy Uh, powered by the sound of the drum to delve into these places in connection with the animal powers provides deep resources and reservoirs of healing and connection. Um, And so these things can be also anything that is experienced in these shamanic journeys can also be invited into experiencing in our dreaming world uh, or nighttime dreams. So this is a very effective bridge for people to learn how to be in a conscious dream state. Mm -hmm. uh, And then they're able to kind of translate those skills into their nighttime dreams in a very powerful way, in a very natural way. Uh, One thing I notice is the accessibility of this work and how people seem to come at it in such a natural way. Um, and as I mentioned, you know, uh, that is, that is so crucial, you know, that we have bridges of commonality where we can have common experiences in a very deep way. Um, because, yes. as, you know, for me, we see how, you know, divisive our world can seem sometimes. So dreams can really provide that bridge for us, you know, in, in a number of ways. You know, I have to let our listeners know that, um, Dreaming um, or doing the shamanic journey in, that's like one of my favorite things to do. And uh, those drums put you in such a deep level of relaxation that um, I know for me personally, some people may think this sounds crazy, but um, I don't really care. (laughs) I just have to say that. But in my (laughs) um, lower world, you know, I have seen now I understand where they come up with the Harry Potters and the the trolls and the unicorns and the, you know, because I actually saw those things once I went into that world. And I was like, oh, my God, this stuff is real because I've never seen a Harry Potter movie or I just have never been interested in those. So I've actually never seen those any of those type of movies. But my dreams were very much too detailed for it to not be something there. I was like, okay, I have crossed over to another realm. <laughs> and it was right. wonderful. You're no, you're no mm-hmm. longer in the realm of muggles when you're doing this kind of work. <laughs> no. So yes, people, if you want to learn about these things, this is, it's, it's, it's just great. It's a really nice thing, but make sure I advise you to go to somebody like Valley to make sure that you do this and you, um, I still think there is a little bit of protection that you need when you journey. Um, but, um, Oh, absolutely. That's and so that's why, important. yeah. And that's why I feel like people should go somewhere and don't just try and do it on your own because I have met some unsavory characters that I had to get rid of. So, or at least tell yeah. them, you know, you're not, you're not welcome here because this is my world. So anyway, I just thought I'd have to that's put that out so there. That, crucial. Yeah. And you can use drums also just for regular meditation. It also helps you go deep. You, that's not necessarily a uh, journey. in. that's just a nice relaxation. They kind of fade away and you don't hear them anymore. At least that's how it works for me. Yeah. Yeah. No, I encourage people to do journeying, you know, as an individual practice. Mm-hmm. Um, once you have, um, you know, experienced the shamanic journey in a group, and kind of know the basics of the territory, as I mentioned previously, 
You kind of had a launch in a safe and effective way by having your animal powers there to protect and guide you. That's also really important. Yes, it is. You don't want to be out there wandering around on your own devices and kind of like uh, get a little lost in the process. Yes. (laughs) But we're going to stop here. We're going to stop. Yeah, exactly. We're going to stop and take a quick break. Please stay tuned. Psychologist, master certified coach, and CEO of the executive and organizational development firm True North Leadership, Dr. Relly Nadler brings his expertise in emotional intelligence to keynotes, consulting, coaching, and training. He is the author of Leader's Playbook and Leading with Emotional Intelligence that lays out tips and tools for effective leadership. Dr. Nadler has designed multi day executive boot camps for high achievers in Fortune 500 companies and has coached CEOs, presidents and their staff and developed and delivered innovative leadership programs for such organizations as Anheuser-Busch, BMW, MCI, EDS, DreamWorks Animation, the U.S. Navy and Vanguard Health Systems. To learn more and get your free iPhone app highlighting his tools with videos, leadership keys, visit www.truenorthleadership.com today. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interests through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. Welcome back to Healing at Soul Level. I'm your host, Shauna Williams, and we're broadcasting live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Today's guest, Valerie Reed, is talking with me about dreaming with the ancestors and active dreaming. So what I'd like to know is how can I use active dreaming for my benefit? Well, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked that because there are so many different ways that um, dreams provide support uh, for our lives and always come in the guise of wholeness and um, helping us and supporting us, helping us to navigate our dream life. And so as I mentioned in the beginning of uh, the program, how uh, I had a precognitive dream that saved my life. That's a pretty concrete and specific um, example of how dreams can be helpful as they can help you avert a disaster by knowing what kind of potential future you may be dealing with. And so it's really, really important to learn how to look for that kind of information in your dreams and what, how to deal with it effectively So that's a really important part that we teach in active dreaming is, and it actually becomes part of our dream sharing process called the lightning dream sharing process, um, where, you know, one of the steps is called the reality check. And so in that uh, lens of looking at the dream, you're looking for the details of the dream that could be giving you information about a possible future that could manifest Um, And it's not like it's going to be exactly depicted in the dream. Dreams are multi-layered, and so they can be, uh, you know, filled with metaphorical information, mythic information, you know, uh, in in connection with, you know, your guides and spiritual teachers and other realms of experience, and also have very specific information about something that's going to manifest in your waking reality. So it's, as you can see, you know, or you may gather that it's not a linear process when it comes to dreaming 
and we're not limited by time and space either. It's it's not three dimensional, you know, in the waking world that we live in. Um, so it can expand our capacity to go beyond the limits that we deal with uh, on the daily, and put us in contact with our our creative daemon, which is our creative genius, and what it is that we want to create in the world, and how to navigate the things that we, uh, you know, come in contact with in our waking world. So, you know, this gets into some pretty practical problem-solving skills, you know, uh, that can be found in dreams, but it can, but it also gets into, you know, the possibility of connecting with you know, mystery and spiritual wisdom and um, having uh, actual moments of spiritual revelation, direct spiritual revelation, right? Mm -hmm. So we're talking about, um, you know, a resource or a direct hookup with your spiritual, you know, uh, light and your spiritual um, ability to be transcendent, right? Um, uh, also, dreams are not just about the individual, but they're social experiences. So they're places that we interact with other dreamers and other beings and um, other time periods and other places. So um, there is a tremendous expanse of possibility that we can um, become in contact with. And then one of my favorite parts of active dreaming is the incredible healing resources that are available in dreams. And that also gets into things like uh, dreaming the future, getting the information of a physical problem you may be dealing with that you may want to have information about what's the best way to approach healing in your own life. And we can also even provide information for others that, you know, are close to us. And sometimes we get information on their behalf. So active dreaming really helps us to share this information that has uh, an ethical and compassionate way of doing it without, you know, giving somebody a dire warning that may have the opposite effect of what we're trying to do, if you understand what I'm right. saying. Right, right. So that's um, a really important thing to learn how to do also is how to share dreams in an effective way that will bring through um, possibilities that are helpful. Yeah. And I have a um, question. So, because I feel like, and maybe it's just because I don't understand, but my dreams seem to be cryptic, even though other people may understand, like, I, I haven't had this in a long time, but for probably a month, I would dream that every time I'm in my dream, it seems like I was either looking for a bathroom or if I'd find one, it'd be in the middle of the room at a party or it would just be nasty. But it was always dealing with a bathroom. It was just always different situations. It'd be in the middle of a kitchen, you know, a party or whatever. So yeah, that means something, but that's cryptic to me as a layman. Okay, well. So you so, teach people um, how to do that as well or figure that out? Yeah, um, with the lightning dream sharing process, which is actually a really quick process. It only has four steps, but it's really amazing the kind of ways that you can open up your dreams in such deep ways in this process. One of which is encouraging people to, when sharing the dream, is to say it in a way where you provide all the details of the dream and tell it like a story, right? Um, and so when you're when you're sharing the dream, you don't want to get into trying to interpret it as you go, <laughs> okay. and um, or edit anything out. Uh, right. But you really want to try to bring through as much descriptive detail of the dream as you possibly can. This helps the person that you're sharing the dream with to go inside the dream with you, right? Just like telling a story would. And that's okay. important. So um, we also pay attention to how you felt when you woke up from the dream because sometimes the feeling that you have from a dream is different than what you might imagine it would be based on the narrative of the dream. So this is already telling you something about the dream by what uh -huh. you're feeling when you woke up from it. And it also helps you navigate through the dream from that felt sense 
and not really get stuck in the intellect, which tends to want to analyze things in a way that kind of sucks the energy out of the dream. So you want to open the dream up more uh, by, you know, working through that fluid ability that we have of feeling our way into the dream and what the feeling was inside the dream when you woke up. Okay, well, we're going to stop right here and take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, great. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Wait No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Wait No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Wait No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Wait No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. Welcome back to Healing at Soul Level. I'm your host, Shauna Williams, and we're broadcasting live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Today, we're talking with Valerie Reed about active dreaming. And when we left off, we were talking about um, dream sharing. So, Valerie? Yeah, so the lightning dream sharing process, as I mentioned before, has four steps. And we were talking about the reality check in terms of looking for precognitive information. Uh, So the next step would be, what do you most want to know from the dream? So that helps the person you're sharing the dream to kind of hone in on the place in the dream that holds the most energy perhaps for the dreamer and to start to try and then bring that out uh, through the dream sharing process. And so one way that that's communicated in sharing dreams with others, whether it be a friend or family or in a group setting, is that you would give feedback from the perspective of if this were my dream and then proceed to kind of give your experience, your, your, your intuitive uh, perspective, perhaps, and the things that came up while you were listening to the dreamer share their dream with you. And then the last step is the uh, action plan. And this is so important because it's not just about finding the answer to what your dream means. And there is not just one answer to that. Um, as I mentioned, dreams are multi-layered, so they can provide information uh, many, many times upon revisiting, which is another important reason to keep a dream journal. <laughs> uh, but, act, but dreams are meant to be acted upon to both honor the dream and strengthen the connection between the dreaming self and the waking self. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's the, that's the transformational action that can help bring that dream energy into the waking world when we take action uh, based on the tr- on the dream, but it can also be related to something, as I mentioned, really practical in terms of problem solving. So if you're given that kind of information in the dream, you know exactly, maybe perhaps what kind of action will help resolve a problem for you. Um, so, um, 
you know, those are the steps of dream sharing. And uh, the more you kind of practice it and get into it, which we do in our groups that I offer a couple of times a month, uh, where you have opportunities together with other active dreamers and practice this process. Um, and I also have more information about the process on my website at crystalishealingarts.org. Um, but one thing that I want to get into um, about another important part of dreaming that I love, especially this time of the year, is dreaming with the ancestors. Uh, because for many cultures, this time of year is a place when, a time of year when we honor the ancestors in the fall. And it's known as the time of year when the veil thins between this world and the other world of experience. And so it's a place where we can uh, meet up with our ancestors for the purpose of guidance and healing and um, becoming more rooted in who we are and uh, those that came before us that have uh, been successful at surviving and passed on not only those experiences through our DNA, but also our, uh, we may find our spiritual gifts are passed on through our ancestors or creative gifts. Uh, and then there's also a tremendous potential for healing, you know, because the things like ancestral trauma, transgenerational trauma that also gets passed on. And in the abilities that we have to track, you know, the the paths of the ancestors through our own blood um, and multi-generational connections that we have to ancestors, we're able to uh, find ways and pathways of healing uh, mm -hmm. ancestral trauma. So that's getting into... Uh, Transpersonal dreaming, you know, the ability to dream on behalf of others, right? Um, so when we're doing that, we're dreaming for healing not only uh, generations in the past, but this, will, uh, this can affect generations in the future as well. Um, so this is a really deep and soulful uh, way to connect with our dreams and... Um, the kind of information that we can receive from our ancestors about who we are and even why we're here are available. Um, so this is a time of year that I really love to honor the ancestors and invite them in to visit in dreams, which many people understand happens and have had those kinds of experiences, but may not have a way to even communicate it with others. So that's a really important thing that we provide a space where people can talk about these kinds of occurrences of dreaming with their departed loved ones um, and teaching people how to connect with their departed loved ones can in, in effect be incredibly healing uh, just to even have those kinds of experiences. Um, and so um, that's, that's really a deep focus of the work that I do throughout the fall. Okay. So that's just um, a time where <clears throat> the fall is normally the time where you said the veil thins out more so it's easier to do the dreaming or to... The, or well, to, it's the time of year that the ancestors are near. Uh, oh, okay. Have the, that you have the uh, holidays like uh, Samhain, which is connected with my Celtic ancestors, and you also have um, Dias de los Muertos, which is also, you know, uh, another time that the ancestors are celebrated um, and that uh, as a time of year when they come to visit. Or, you know, another way of saying it is All Hallows' Eve, which is known to us, most of us, as Halloween. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the portal is open, right? And so they... Uh, they come near and they come uh, to visit their loved ones. And they may be off doing other things at other times of the year, but this is the time of year when, you, when um, it's important to honor the ancestors and connect with them in a very intentional way. 
And um, it really provides that that connection. When we begin to pay attention to the ancestors, we find that their hand is guiding us in our lives often than more often than we realize. <laughs> right. Well, we're going to stop, <clears throat> take a quick break. Um, please stay tuned. We'll be right back. WikiWags brings harmony back into your home for male dogs and their owners. Inventor and entrepreneur Linda Jangula has created the disposable doggy diaper wraps made with the male dog in mind. The built-in wicking ability prevents rashing and other potential health issues for your dog. Each wrap comes in four sizes and has dual reattachable magic tabs for easy adjustments. And each size has a 7-inch logo strip for adjustability. So they are comfortable and easy to use. No more fuss, just leave the mess to us. Whether you're in or out, your dog will be free to run about. Stop cleaning and start enjoying your home, and you can even leave your dog alone. To order your WikiWags, visit WikiWags.com, or to find out where to buy WikiWags in your town, visit MyWikiWags.com and start enjoying having man's best friend around. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Welcome back to Healing at Soul Level. I'm your host, Shauna Williams, and we're broadcasting live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Today, we've been talking with Valerie Reed about uh, dreaming with the ancestors. And so I'd like for you to tell people how they can get in contact with you, Valerie. Absolutely. Um, my uh, website is chrysalishealingarts.org. And there you will find the services and the events that I have available. I uh, have a retreat coming up in Southern Oklahoma, October 26th through the 28th. Uh, that is for Wild Women Fall Retreat, and we'll be focused on dreaming with the ancestors. Um, and we still have a few spaces open for that. Um, and information is available on my website. And I also have a blog that really describes the kinds of dreams, exceptional dreams, um, and shamanic dreams that I've had. And my website for my blog is dreamsawake.wordpress.org, uh, uh, .com, sorry. And um, I'm also going to be participating in today the Cyber Dreaming Conference for the International Association for the Study of Dreams. It's an online conference. And I'll be presenting a paper on stranger dreaming, which is related to dreaming about someone you have never met and then meeting them in waking life later. And Mm. um, so that online conference has been going on for a week, but it still has a week left. So people can still register for that. And the way to do that is through the International Association for the Study of the Dreams. And that website is A-S-D-R-E-A-M-S dot org. Um, and those are the primary resources to connect with me. I do have a dream group that I facilitate on the second Sunday of every month at the Unity Church on, uh, on Greenville in Dallas, where we practice uh, many of the things that we talked about today. And then also on the fourth Friday of every month at the Garden Cafe in East Dallas, over lunch, we have a dream sharing group every month, which I'll be doing a little bit later this uh, this morning, today, uh, oh. at the Garden Cafe. So I invite everybody to come out and talk about dreams with me. 
Uh, <laughs> and on the new moon and the full moon in Richardson at Prana Haven, uh, there are shamanic, shamanic journey circles that we that I facilitate um, at that location. Uh, and I do have a workshop coming up on Sunday uh, called Altered Awareness. Um, and it is about connecting with the ancestors and making a, an altar for your ancestors, that, you know, an individual altar that you can help you bring that energy into your home. Um, so that's going to be a fun workshop that we're doing on Sunday from 1 to 4 at Prana Haven in Richardson, Texas. So a lot of interesting and fun activities and events going on uh, in the waking world uh, with the help of dreams <laughs> and active <laughs> dreaming. Mm-hmm. Uh, lots of opportunities to interact and learn about dreams. Uh, so I really hope that um, if it's something that interests anyone, they will reach out and connect with me because I also do individual sessions. Um, with people, and I'm also available to do those over Skype for long-distance sessions. And you can find more information about my services on my website at chrysalishealingarts.org. So I really um, appreciate the invitation to visit with you today, Shauna. Thank you. I really enjoyed our conversation about dreams and I hope that we will uh, connect in the dream world uh, or yes. in a dream <clears throat> sharing circle or shamanic journey circle. <laughs> well, thank you for being <laughs> on the show today, Valley. Okay, so to listen to this podcast and past episodes or to book services with myself, visit my website at indigo-qi.com. You've been listening to Healing at Soul Level, and I'm your host, Shauna Williams. Thank you for tuning in. Love and light. This has been Healing at Soul Level with host Shauna Williams. Listen each week as Shauna will help you discover the different healing modalities and how to use them in your everyday life right here on Shauna Williams Healing at Soul Level. We've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.